Hello, and welcome to another episode of Alkira's Design Zone video series. My name is Misbar Ahmad, and I'm a technical marketing engineer at Alkira. In this episode, we are going to go over the enterprise routing use cases for the cloud and share how Alkira can actually deliver these use cases seamlessly and elegantly. Enterprise routing, as we all know, is challenging to say the least. While designing, network architects have to make sure that they have high availability built into the network, which can withstand different types of failures. You would like to make sure that all the capacity within the network is being utilized efficiently. If the networks are interconnected, you have to make sure that there are not any routing loops or asymmetric routing. And lastly, lack of centralized visibility of route has been a big challenge. Today, you have to go hop by hop into each router to check the routing details. There is not a centralized repository or a view of the network from a routing perspective. As you look to embrace uh, cloud, none of these challenges are going away because the cloud need to integrate with the existing network. So as you are looking to select a solution, you have to make sure that it has the fundamentals to deal with all the routing challenges that I just talked about. From Alkira's perspective, we knew it from the get-go that any solution that we want to deliver that can simplify cloud networking needs to integrate the existing WAN requirements. As a result, we have support for both BGP and static. It seems trivial, but trust me, we have ran into situation where a customer have an on-prem router, which can only do static. So as a solution, you need to make sure that you have support for both advanced functionality within, within the dynamic uh, protocols like BGP and something as basic as static so that you can interoperate in all sorts of different scenarios. High availability and redundancy out of the box is in the DNA of our solution. So the next two bullet cover those aspects. Any connector that is onboarded on Alkira has redundant connectivity to the CXP. So if one connection fails, there is always a connection to back it up. At the same time, customer can look to dual home their connectors to multiple regions, to multiple CXPs, to have inter-region redundancy. Then from a route visibility perspective, there is a centralized route visibility dashboard, which I'm going to demo which gives you details about all the routes at a system level, regional level, down to the each individual connector, thus leaving behind no blind spot in your network from a visibility perspective. Lastly, a route policy framework, which is similar to BGP, but much simpler and easier to configure. These policies can be applied to a connector in an inbound direction or an outbound direction for traffic engineering. Let's now go over the use cases that we can deliver to our customer based on the functionality that we offer today. So the first use case that we are going to talk about is inter-region and inter-cloud redundancy. As the enterprise look to embrace cloud, there's a level of trust that they have that within the cloud service provider, there is enough redundancy built into the cloud that they won't experience the outages or the failures within the region or within the cloud. For the most part, it's true. However, what we have seen recently that these cloud service providers do go through different outages. There may be an availability zone that may be down. There may be uh, a region that may be down, or there are multiple regions that, that may be experiencing uh, an outage. In this case, as a cloud networking solution, we wanted to make sure that we provide our customers the ability that in case of there is a cloud service provider failure, which is uh, uh, restricted to a region or an availability zone, that they have the redundancy built into the network to withstand those kind of failures. One of the features that can deliver this is failover to a CXP region, a backup CXP. So any connector, whether it's an on-prem connector or a cloud connector, can multi-home to different CXPs. The way you configure it is there is a failover CXP region knob that you need to enable and you need to pick a CXP. This CXP can exist within the same cloud. In that case, it will be an inter-region redundancy or they could exist in a different cloud providers. In that case, you can get the inter-cloud redundancy. The next use case that we are going to talk about is use cloud backbone for inter-region. 
This may be a useful use case for an enterprise, which is a small to medium size, and now they are looking to expand. As they look to expand, they need a global presence. In order to have a global network up and running, they either need to go through a service provider or set up their own WAN infrastructure through SD-WAN, which takes time, it's high capex. Now with Alkira, we can deliver this solution on an on-demand basis. They don't need any hardware or any software to be deployed. Now, as they look and they have cloud presence, they can use Alkira for cloud access as well. So in this case, the way to achieve this use case, as they are onboarding the branches, all they need to uh, enable is branch to branch by uh, setting advertise on-prem as yes. So in that case, what happens is, let's suppose the US branch uh, site actually advertises a route to a CXP. The CXP will then uh, in US West will forward that route to a U, uh, CXP in US East. And now since we have enabled advertise on-prem routes as yes, this US East will then again advertise this subnet back to US East. Now in that case, you have branch to branch and also branch to cloud using Alkira. The last use case that we are going to talk about is integrating cloud with the existing WAN backbone. In this case, customer already has a WAN infrastructure. This WAN infrastructure may be again based on MPLS or SD-WAN. And they wanna use uh, Alkira as an incremental solution for just the cloud access. The way we can deliver this solution is as we onboard the branch, first of all, we have to disable advertise on-prem routes. Because in this case, uh, you, the US West branch will advertise the routes to the CXP. Uh, over the cloud backbone, uh, the CXP will advertise it to the other CXP. But this CXP, since advertise on-prem is disabled, won't advertise this route back to the US East branch. So now branch can only use the CXP infrastructure to do uh, branch to cloud type of a, a communication. They can uh, continue to use their existing WAN for all the branch to branch. One additional policy that you need in this case is to make sure that uh, we need to find out which uh, CXP to prefer in case of a branch to cloud. For instance, US West wants to talk to a cloud resources in US East. Um, the, the US West traffic will come to US West, use the cloud backbone to go to US East, and then to the cloud workloads. On the way back on the US East, now um, they, they are actually receiving routes for both the West and the East on both CXP. Now this USD will need to make sure that it always uses its outbound connection to go to the USD East branch only and use the cloud backbone to actually forward the traffic to the US West branch. So in this case, you'll apply an inbound policy on both the CXPs and do ASPath prepend for the remote regions branch route so that uh, this US West CXP is only preferred for US West branches and US East is only preferred for the US East branches. The way you'll do it is you'll define a rule, you'll define the prefixes and do an ASPath prepare. Next, we'll do a quick demo and we'll walk through like how easy it is to configure from the portal as well. First of all, we'll show you uh, where to configure those advertised on-prem fields, where to uh, set up a CXP failover uh, region within the portal, and then from a route visibility perspective, how these routes are shown. Because in this case, um, I have an inbound policy where I'm doing an AS path prepend. How does it show within the system from a route table perspective? Uh, additionally, what we have is, let's suppose if you have overlapping IP address spaces, the system automatically detects it and basically disable those routes for the cloud in case if there is because of error or uh, fat fingering, there is an overlapping address space, um, the, the system will notify you. And secondly, if there is a NAT within the, uh, uh, for a particular IP address space, uh, you can also see it from the route table. Now with that, let's go to the portal and see the demo and see it, act uh, see it in action. Now, in this example, let's just add uh, an IPsec here to US West CXP. In order to add the IPsec connector, you first have to name it. Just think of it, uh, this name as a site. Uh, if you wanna advertise default route towards this branch uh, uh, from CXP, just enable this tab as yes, otherwise you can keep it as no. 
advertise on prem routes by default is no uh, but you can for if you want to enable branch to branch you can change it to yes as we talked about during the presentation uh, this enable tab is more like a shut no shut option uh, for the uh, interface. So for instance, if you want to configure this branch uh, to and you want the actual migration to happen during the maintenance window, so you can pre-configure this branch and just keep it in a uh, shut state by disabling it, uh, else you can just enable it. Um, this endpoint name is more like a router name, so just call it, let's call it router1. Uh, call it router one two three um if you want to do if if the branch has a static ip or a dynamic ip in this case let's just pick static ip address and uh we can just uh give some random ip here uh, 45 or 45 uh, pre-shared key uh, can be automatically generated by Alkira. Uh, then we can actually jump to the routing section. Uh, again, as we talked about the routing, we support both static and dynamic routing. Let's just pick BGP here. Uh, we can do 65500. And then if you wanna do the MD5 hash for this BGP connection, you, can, you have the option to provide that, but it's optional. Uh, you pick a segment. Uh, and then down at the bottom, you see the failover CXP region. So by default, it's disabled. If you want to enable it, just toggle it, uh, enable it and pick the CXP. Since in this uh, environment, I only have two CXP. So it auto selected the uh, second CXP here. And with that, I'll just do a safe connector and boom, the connector will be configured. Now, if you want to add policies, I'll show you quickly uh, uh, how you can create policies. So here you'll just do add policy. Once you add policy, we have different types of policies. NAT policy was covered in the last design zone video. Now for this one, we'll focus on the routing policy. Now here you can just name it design zone uh, policy X, Y, Z or test, let's suppose. Uh, you can pick the scope, which is the segment. We want to apply it on the core. Uh, then you can pick the connectors, the group of connectors. Uh, and uh, in this case, let's just pick this DZ routing just as an example. So it will pick all the connectors with that tag, or you can do it in, on an individual connector basis. You can define the direction, whether you want to do it on the inbound side or the outbound side. When you do an outbound side, you have the some default option, whether you want to advertise the uh, uh, default route uh, uh, towards the branch, uh, you can disable by default. It's yes. You want to advertise the on-prem routes. Uh, again, it is no by default. Uh, and then you can define the rule. So actually from a rule perspective, um, in the rule, you can match on these, uh, parameters like community, ASPAT, prefix list, extended uh, community on the CXP, basically all the routes that are, you, uh, that you are receiving on the CXP, you wanted to, uh, match on those and then set a particular value or all the route across this, uh, uh, uh network or, or this environment. So let's suppose if we do it on a prefix list, if you already have the prefix, just select it from the dropdown or you can create a new prefix. What you want to do, you want to allow these routes and then uh, you can either do from a set perspective, you can do AS path prepending, uh, you can set the community values and then the extended community. And that's how you'll configure uh, the policies. Now, uh, from here, uh, we can actually go to a, do a quick demo of our routing table. So for that, you go to dashboard, uh, you visualize routes and we pick the segment that we are interested in. So in this segment, what you are seeing here is uh, that it gives you all the routing information but it gives you a little more than the uh, traditional routing information that we are that we are used to. So, for instance, um, the the uh, the routes that I'm receiving from the branch, as uh, shown in the slide, like we have these 10.10.10.0/24 and um, 10.20.20.0/25, and uh, being advertised. Uh, for 10.10, uh, US West is the preferred one because that's its local subnet. Uh, 10.20 is the local subnet for USD. So you see both the routes in the route table, but it clearly says that it's a not preferred route. And if you click that, you will see why. There is an AS path prepend list here that we have done through route policies, and that's why it's not preferred. However, when I see the other route, there is no AS path prepending. The same thing, I'll look at it 
uh, for the other route as well. If you look at the US West route, there's an AS path preprint, which makes it a less preferred route and uh, make US East as the preferred one. Now, interesting enough, you see there is a overlapping cloud subnet that I created, which is like 10.30.30.0 slash 24. And in both of them are showed as not preferred because what we uh, have in the system automatically that any cloud route, if you are creating it, in case of a branch, you can have branches interconnected and you can expect the routes to be coming from two different locations. But if on the cloud side, if you are receiving the same routes within the same segment, that is a configuration error. So that needs to be fixed. So what we do on the cloud side is we uh, make both the routes not preferred. So it's not going to be forwarding any traffic to this subnet. And once you click that, it will give you an error that this overlaps with the connector instances in one or more Akira CXPs. And now you have to actually go and do NAT or fix this uh, overlapping address space. So it gives you proactively the information that if there is an overlapping subnet that exists in the environment. And lastly, what you see here is this uh, hash sign. So this is the translated prefix. So this 30.30.0 slash 24 with the hash sign means that it is not the actual real subnet. It's the uh, translated prefix that you are seeing here. And now in any of those connectors from this centralized view, if I want to go back and actually take a look at the individual connectors that what I'm receiving from that connector, I can simply click that and see what are the routes that I'm receiving from that connector and what are the routes uh, that I'm advertising it to this connector. So this was a quick summary of all the routing functionality that we have. If you think that these routing capabilities that Alkira has to offer is useful and it meets your requirements, uh, reach out to us at sales at for a quick demo. Thanks for watching. 